Okay, so uh, we're we're going to um, we're going to shift things a, a, li a little again. Uh, this is a great uh, example of uh, another government department uh, um, helping to create the the infrastructure uh, to bring parties uh, together. Now we uh, we have a late change with uh, our speaker. We were meant to have. Um, Andrew McEwen of uh, Logchain to talk about uh, the bulk chemical supply chain. And we're unable to do that right now, but we, uh, we can correct a problem that we had earlier. Uh, earlier uh, today, we had a presentation from Eric Chan, uh, the lead solution architect at GovTech, who was talking about SG Findex. And I was really keen to, to hear this. Uh, unfortunately, Eric's uh, internet dropped out on him um, in um, in the in the middle of his presentation, so he has recorded it though, and we have now we are now able to uh, to play that for you. So I'm going to step aside one moment, and uh, we're going to and we're going to play you. Hi, uh, good afternoon, Eric's, everyone. Um, My name is Eric, and I'm a thank you solutions architect with GovTech under the National Digital Identity Group, or in short, NDI. I'm very excited to be participating yet again in this year's API Days conference, and many thanks to John and his team for this yearly invite. Before I begin, let me give you a brief background of myself. I started my tertiary education majoring in computer science in the late 1990s, and for those who remember, it was at the peak of the dot-com bubble. Everyone is talking about technology, and investors are willing to pour capitals into just about any technology company. However, this rosy picture started to fall apart when I was just about to graduate and the dot-com bubble burst in the late 2002. Anyway, long story short, I was lucky to be recruited by a local company and started my career developing application frameworks using Apache Struts as the MVC framework and database middlewares such as Hibernate and Hypothesis. Some of these technologies are actually age-revealing, so it may be a good sign if you have not heard of them. Fast-forwarding into the next 10 plus years of my career, I moved from solution providers to product companies, back to solution providers, and then to banks, and now I'm with the public sector. In terms of roles, I've done a fair share of development and engineering work, participated in consultancy and pre-sales activities as well as solutioning, team leading, and even operations support. I joined GovTech in 2017 and began a journey of solutioning and developing API-based products like MyInfo and SafeEntry, which were presented during API Days events in 2019 and 2020, respectively. And this year, I'm proud to be able to share with you about SG Findex, which is a SimPlus product that facilitated open banking for financial planning. So without further ado, let me start the presentation proper. I'll begin with defining what SG Findex is. By the name of the product, I'm sure you would, you would have guessed correctly that SG stands for Singapore and Fin represents financial. DEX might be a little difficult to make out, but it stands for data exchange. Of course, a technical guy like me didn't come up with this name, else it would have been a financial planner or open banking platform with camel casing. The product was officially launched by Singapore's Deputy Prime Minister, Hing Sui Kiat, at Singapore FinTech Festival in December 2020. In his opening speech, DPM Hing described SG FinTech as the world's first public digital infrastructure that allows a person to sign in using his national digital identity and provide consent to obtain his financial information from different financial institutions and government agencies. This description concisely pointed out that SG Findex is developed by the public sector in collaboration with the private sector and provides strong identity assurance using users' national digital identity, which is crucial since financial information is being shared via this infrastructure. 
Next, I would like to use this video to illustrate how SGF index is used in financial planning. Well, no matter how cliche it is, a picture paints a thousand words, let alone a video, right? So sit back, relax, and enjoy this one minute video. Financial planning made easier. SG Findex is a first of its kind platform that enables the consolidation of your financial information through your participating banks in My Money Sense. It's a secure and trusted platform with SingPass login and customer consent. Just approve the connection of your banks to SG Findex. Once your banks are connected, you can retrieve information securely. With the consolidated information, your financial planning can be made easier and more comprehensive. So get started with SG Findex through your bank or My Money Sense today. All right. I hope now you have a good sense of the role that SG Findex plays, which is to retrieve financial information from participating banks that you have given consent to link up with. Financial planning can then be performed easily and more comprehensively using this consolidated information from seven major banks as well as from my info. Now that we are clear about what SGF Index is and the purpose that it serves, the next question naturally will be on the usage of the platform since December 2020. Up until the end of February 2021, which is about three months since the official launch, SGF Index has garnered about 120,000 unique users who linked up approximately 160,000 accounts with SGF Index and performed more than 360,000 retrievals for consolidated viewing. Not too shabby in my opinion, and we are expecting the numbers to go even higher when more financial apps are rolled out. I'll now go into the details of how SGF Index works. As mentioned earlier, SGF Index is a result of the collaboration between public and private sector, developing a bunch of APIs, to ensure interoperability, as well as respecting users' privacy by obtaining consent before any operations are performed. To illustrate the importance of SGF Index in this data sharing ecosystem, let me do a comparison between the situations with and without SGF Index. In the scenario without SGF Index, if service providers need to get data from multiple sources, they will need to establish bilateral connections with each one of them, forming a mesh network that you see here. If this is a service mesh diagram of a system, I think technical folks on the call will be very happy, but unfortunately, it is not. Just think about the amount of effort to perform connectivity and system integration testing between the participants, overlay that with the business discussions and agreements that needs to take place, and multiply that by the number of participants. On top of that, try extending this model to all participants in the industry. But with the introduction of SG Findex, the mesh network breaks down and the connections become more streamlined with service providers and data sources going through SG Findex as the single gateway to get connected to each other. Some would, however, argue that this design has a single point of failure which is SGF Index. But keep in mind that SGF Index is not a single connection, but a platform that is architected to be highly available, just like how you would have designed your own system. Moving on, in order to use SGF Index, users will have to go through two separate journeys as mentioned in the earlier video. The first journey is about linking participating banks to SGF Index. And to do this, users will have to log in with SingPass to access SG Findex page as shown here. The top button on this screen will list all participating financial institutions for users to select for linking up. 
after successful link up, the financial institution will be listed in the middle part of the screen with the option to disconnect if users wish to unlink. Additionally, Azure Findex will also display the date of the first link up performed at the top of the list, as all link ups will expire after a period of time, which is relative to this date. The period, if I'm not wrong, is set to 365 days, not one year, but 365 days for standardization to take care of leap years. Let me clarify this with examples. If you perform your first link up on 1st of January, all your link ups will expire 365 days later. However, if you perform your link up on 1st of January 2024, which is a leap year, all your link ups will expire on 30th of December 2024, exactly 365 days later. When performing the link up process, users will also be required to log into the financial institutions using, for example, personal banking credentials issued by the bank. Once done, the process continues, asking for user's consent to allow the link up with SGF index. Assuming the consent is given, users will then be brought back to SGF index page as shown in the earlier slide with the connected financial institutions listed. For the purpose of this presentation, let's assume that this user, who happened to have the same name as me, Eric, has chosen and consented to link up bank B, D, and E with SGF index. However, Eric soon realizes that bank D is where his private and secret account is. Could be for, uh, I don't know, maybe funding his extracurricular activities, and he's not comfortable to share. He can then access SGF index and perform a disconnect. To bank D as shown here. The disconnect process is instantaneous and SGF index will also inform bank D to purge the consent that is given. Eric is now happy and wants to see what bank A can offer him in terms of financial planning. He visits bank A's site and chooses the online financial planning function. At this point, Eric is redirected to SGF Index, which he logs in with his SingPass account and provides consent to release data from the financial institutions that he has linked up. SGF Index then proceeds to contact Bank B and E for the required data, as well as other financial information from Eric's MyInfo profile, collates the payloads, and returns to Bank A for further actions. This is a replica of the consent screen, showing the data Eric has agreed to share with Bank A. This data includes CPF account balances and tax information from government sources, as well as savings and current accounts, loans, unit trust holdings that he has with the banks. Eric also noted that the consent is for all financial institutions that he has linked up, and started to count his lucky stars that he had disconnected from Bank D before clicking on the I agree button. Additionally, we have quite a substantial amount of financial information being shared during the transaction. Eric begins to worry about the security and privacy of this platform and whether his data could be compromised or stolen by someone impersonating as him. How secure is SGF index then? Let us now dive in to look at the security aspect of the platform. This slide provides a summary of the design considerations that were put into SGF Index against the corresponding features that fulfills and addresses these considerations. Firstly, we all agree that any data sharing can only be done with users' consent, and users should have control over which participating entities they want to share data with. For this, SGF Index makes use of SingPass as the authentication and authorization platform for both the link up as well as data sharing journey. 
being the national digital identity, SingPass provides the strong identity assurance required to protect against impersonation and laying down the trust that any consent given is indeed by the user himself. Next, it is a no-brainer that data must be protected during transmission and should not be read nor stored along the way, not even by SGFindex. Hence, the data transmitted through SGFindex is end-to-end -end encrypted using public-private key pairs to ensure that only the financial planning application that the user has authorized to receive the data is able to successfully decrypt the payload. For better appreciation of these security measures, let me present them with respect to the user journeys. So Eric is back. I'll start with the link up journey, which Eric logs into SG Findex with SingPass, which proves that he is really Eric. Next, he logs into Bank E, which performs an ID verification with SG Findex before capturing Eric's consent to perform the link up. He can also choose to disconnect any of the link ups as he wishes. The entire process involves a few server to server API calls, which are also protected via neutral authentication using PKI digital signatures. I will go into more details on this in the later part of the presentation. Moving on to the data sharing journey. Similarly, Eric needs to log in to SGFindex with SyncPass and provide his consent for every data share. As before, all server-to-server -server calls are protected with PKI digital signatures. The financial data returned from Bank B and E is encrypted using the public key provided by Bank A to ensure that the data cannot be decrypted by anyone else even if it is somehow intercepted along the way. And that is on top of the TLS network level encryption. Last but not least, SGF index only enables the collation and transfer of data. So no data is logged nor persisted in any storage medium. Next, I'll be going through the technology behind SGF index. But rather than talk about technology, which changes over time, I will instead bring you through the standards that we adhere to for SGF index to ensure interoperability between the parties. For authentication, SGF index uses SingPass as the identity provider, which is Open ID Connect compliant. OIDC is a widely adopted authentication standard these days, and this choice provides the platform the flexibility in integrating with other OIDC compliant IDPs in the future. For authorization, I believe many of you would have guessed that we are using the OAuth 2.0 authorization framework for capturing user consent in both journeys. During LinkUp, financial institutions issue long-lived refresh tokens, and SGF Index uses this to exchange for short-lived access tokens during data sharing. This is also a widely adopted approach to balance security and usability of the system. In terms of defining interface APIs, we follow the RESTful architectural style to meaningfully define the APIs, communicating over the HTTP protocols. Payloads are transmitted in JSON format, which is very lightweight if you compare it with XMLs. On data encryption and signing, Payload in, in transit are encrypted using public keys provided by the requesting entity to ensure end-to-end -end data security and privacy. Data is also signed using the originator's private key for requesting entities to verify the integrity of the data that is transferred over. As consent plays a big role in S3 Findex, it is important that I cover our OAuth 2.0 implementation which is based on the authorization code grant flow in the next few slides. Similarly, I'll be doing this with respect to the user journeys. The OAuth flow in the link-up process is kicked off when Eric chooses to perform a link-up with Bank B. 
and SGF Index sends a request to Bank B's authorized API, which navigates Eric into Bank B's site. He then logs in with his banking credential, and Bank B presents a consent page asking Eric if he wants to link the bank with SG Findex. Once consent is given, Bank B generates an auth code which is returned to SG Findex using 302 browser redirect to a pre setup callback URL. With the auth code, SG Findex now proceeds to do a server to server call to Bank B's token API to receive the short lived access and long lived refresh token as artifacts for the link up. You would have noticed that the browser 302 redirect is highlighted here, and that is because this traffic happens over a browser redirect, which is susceptible to man in the middle attack. I will go into how we mitigate this next. This is the same link up flow as before, except that two more steps, 4A and 4B, are added into the process to mitigate man in the middle attack and the risk of attackers misusing the stolen off code. All server to server APIs are protected via mutual authentication using PKI digital signatures to prove the identity of the requester. In this case, SG Findex produces a standardized string representation of the token request comprising of the HTTP request method, the URL, as well as all the parameters that it's trying to send over, and signs that with SGF index private key, which is kept safe in the key store. Bank B will then reconstruct this string using the values in the received request and performs a verification of the digital signature using SGF index public key. This ensures that the token request indeed comes from SGF index, as well as asserting the non repeated repudiation of the data sent across the wire. Bottom line here is that, although we may not be able to prevent men in the middle attacks, but we can certainly minimize the damage that the man in the middle can do. Moving on to the data share journey, I will not go into details as the OAuth flow is exactly the same as the previous journey, except that the trigger point is from bank A and the OAuth server resides on SGF index. The APIs that are used is the same, authorized as well as token. One difference to note is that SGF index only releases short lived access tokens to minimize data exposure time. With the short lived access token, bank A now makes a digitally signed data API call to SG Findex, who should then call out to bank B and E to fetch the data. But before that, SG Findex will need valid bank access tokens before the banks can release data. And that token is obtained by calling the respective bank's token API and passing the corresponding refresh tokens that were issued during linkup. Also, in the data request to SGF index, Bank A will also include a public key in the payload to be used for encrypting data, which SGF index will relay to Bank B and E. Both banks will then encrypt the financial data using this key before sending the information across the wire. This ensures that the data is end-to-end -end encrypted and only Bank A will be able to perform the decryption. I've come to the end of my presentation, and I hope that I've given you a deeper insight into the SGF Index platform and how we have engineered open banking with SyncPass with a bunch of secure standards-based APIs to enable financial planning for the citizens of Singapore. Thank you.